Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Market Mastery. You're here with Trader Dax to give you a rundown at everything that's happening in the markets. Just wanted to do a quick market update on the weekly close, which of crypto is coming in in a couple of, uh, in about one hour. Um, but we have some really interesting stuff that happened last Friday, which was the CPI data came out uh, for the previous month. And it wasn't good news for markets, that's for sure. Uh, so we're going to cover that off in a second and what it means uh, for the direction that we're going to be heading in. So basically, the play that we were looking for across most markets was that we were hoping that we would get a bear market rally and come back up to test this outermost trend line uh, for the downtrend. And that was going to be on the stock market uh, for the NASDAQ 100, SP 500, and then also for Bitcoin. And, and for that to happen, we really needed uh, inflation to have peaked uh, when we came down from 8.6 down to 8.3. Uh, but then we just got the, uh, the numbers out for May and they weren't good. It was back up to 8.6. And the market puked on Friday if we go and have a quick look we can see it sort of started rolling over in anticipation uh, the night before, and then we got a bit of a sell-off. Now that might have been because you know there was insider information that you know everybody knew that was coming out, or it might have been in response to what the White House was saying. Is Janet Yellen was uh, saying to expect the numbers to be high again? So yeah, inflation obviously hasn't peaked. Uh, and that is, you know, why we're seeing a new low getting put in right now on the NASDAQ. So as we can see here, this is the Friday candle, was pretty strong down candle. We just opened up uh, about two hours ago for futures trading, and uh, we're currently making a new low on the daily time frame. So the direction that we're heading in, obviously, uh, we had a nice little counter trend rally, didn't really reach the targets that we were looking for. And that's because, you know, we haven't put in uh, our inflation top yet. And I think until inflation tops, we're probably not going to get anything really that impressive in terms of rallies. So um, we were looking for the S&P 500 to come back to around this area up here. So, you know, we're looking for this to play as a bull flag. Uh, and get a rally up and then roll over to make a new low. Now, because the inflation data came out uh, quite bearish for markets, that means that because inflation came down to 8.3 and now it's gone back up to 8.6, it means that we haven't peaked, right? And that means that the Federal Reserve has to go harder on raising interest rates, harder on quantitative tightening, which means you know that's going to create a more and more bearish pressure and bearish scenario for markets in general and you know asset managers are going to sell off risk assets anybody that accumulated hoping that there's going to be a continuation to the upside and potential bottom in the market they're now having to sell and risk off again which is putting a lot of downwards pressure on the market and now we have to look for new lows so realistically the next level uh on the stock market was the previous high just above the COVID highs. Uh, and this was the, the previous high. Uh, it's at a new all-time high when it hit that um, 3,600 level uh, just before the US uh, 2020 election when Joe Biden got elected, right? So I think that is the next support level. And the way the market's looking at the moment, if this current support level, which we bounced off uh, mid-May, if this doesn't hold, which is not looking like it's going to, uh, the next level is 3,600, I think, that we'll come down to. And that could be a pretty quick and nasty capitulation, which obviously means for Bitcoin that this could get um, pretty nasty uh, and we could see this fall down to the next level of support, which is going to be anywhere, in my opinion, between 24 down to, uh, down to 20K, right? So the main thing that I'm going to be watching is... Uh, is how the Federal Reserve reacts to the CPI data that came out on Friday, how they're going to react to that in the FOMC, which is going to be released on Wednesday afternoon at 2 p.m. US time. Uh, and there's a bit of a rumor going around at the moment that they could hike rates uh, 0.75, uh, so 75 basis points. So if that happens... Uh, I think that'll be a real shock to the market and we could see some pretty nasty capitulation, uh, which has the potential to possibly put in a, uh, a top. But the, the big thing that, you know, I spoke about this on Twitter earlier, the big thing that's a major issue at the moment is a lot of our inflation is being caused by record oil prices, right? And um, 
I don't really see how crashing the market, yes, it's going to reduce some demand, especially in the wealthier classes. It's going to reduce their demand a lot. Um, but it's still not going to do anything for oil prices. It's still not going to help things like food prices with wheat being so much wheat um, not being produced because of the war in Ukraine. And it's not going to reduce oil prices because of everything that's going on with sanctions on Russia, right? So if we go and have a quick look at, um, at oil prices, they are sort of looking like, you know, a potential top is getting put in through here, right? This is a little bit of a um, rising wedge, right? And, you know, possible double top sort of action. So this is definitely one thing to watch to see if this ends up rolling over. Uh, and obviously, you know, more of a grim outlook on the market and future economy um, uh, activity obviously leads to lower oil prices, right? So there's a possibility that, you know, if the Fed does crash the market hard enough, the oil price will come down because, you know, there's a, a much more grimmer look on future economic activity. But I really don't see them being able to have that much of an effect. We really need to see more action out of the U.S. government um, to basically get the U.S. oil production back online, open up things like the Keystone Pipeline and stuff like that. Uh, and that will help to ease this oil, um, ma massive sky high oil price, right? And I don't really see that happening because, you know, they're all, I think they're just way too focused on, you know, the Democrat left-wing party pushing the green agenda and everything like that and being anti-oil, even though it's absolutely screwing everybody over in the entire country and world right now, right? Um, and so let's get back on track. What does that mean uh, for prices? So it really all comes down to what, what are the Federal Reserve going to do on Wednesday? How bearish is their outlook going to be? What's their dot plot going to be? Um, how often, how long, how much longer they're going to uh, forecast inflation to be going up for? Uh, all things like that are going to impact the outlook of the market. And if we do see uh, a collapse here, because I can really see S&P coming back down to 3,600. Uh, which means the NASDAQ will probably um, capitulate down to 10,830. Uh, and I think if that happens, realistically, we could see Bitcoin uh, probably come down to, you know, this daily sort of level, right? And who knows how much panic ends up getting put in between 24 and 22K, right? Um, higher time frame sort of stuff and looking at macro fibs on Bitcoin, uh, the 1.272 is at 24,368, right? Which sort of lines up a little bit with that daily order block through there, but who knows? It might just be nothing. So we definitely could see this come back all the way to 20K here and retest the previous all-time high like we've just seen happen with Ethereum. It's come back to retest the previous all-time high here just today. So um, that I, I believe that can easily happen with Bitcoin at the moment, uh, we've been in this range, right? I'll, I'll show you something here. We had a, um, this is a, a monthly P block, which is prices bounced off multiple times. You know, we had a really big bounce off it earlier on after the first capitulation. Then we, the, the, I guess this is realistically a bear market rally, right? Um, at the end of last year into the all time high. Uh, we're really pushing into that now at the moment on the lower time frames. If we can go and have a look at the daily, you can see that this is realistically holding up price multiple times through here. We had our daily P block through here, which you know price bounced off you know three times through here. Every time it recovered, it looked strong, uh, and now that's got a clear close underneath it yesterday. And now we're sort of getting a bit of a sell-off capitulation candle, you know, into the last hour of the daily right here. One thing to notice as well is this weekly is also a P block. So this weekly candle will be one to highlight. Um, I like to just put a box around them. It'll be one to highlight on your charts and just to see how um, the price reacts to this over the next couple of weeks because, you know, we might come down like this and then push into it and then sell off again because they often react as level major levels of support and resistance. And I think once we get above it, it should act as support. And, you know, that can obviously be an indication that the market is becoming uh, more bullish, but there's not too much to take from this at the moment. They, uh, a lot of the times P blocks can be reversal candles. So, you know, if we're trending for a long time into it, uh, you can reverse off the P block uh, candle, right? So you know, there were a couple of good examples on the, on the, um, on the daily up through here. Let me just go show you guys. Right. So we had a reversal here, right. And I, 
This was one that I, I spoke about a lot in videos back in the middle of last year, right? And we swept the high of this and then reclaimed it, came up here, and then that gave us the short entry of the P block for this rising wedge that was through here like this, right? So that's the sort of thing that, you know, you can watch for those candles and see how the market sort of reacts to it. Same sort of thing is happening down here uh, at the moment on the daily light. So we're bouncing off it multiple times. And now we've broken through it and sort of giving us indication that we're going to be heading to the downside. So now we can obviously use that information and see how the market plays and reacts to that on this weekly P block. But oftentimes there can be indication uh, of um, a, a, move, a really rapid remove to um, like a continuation in that direction, right? So obviously this has been selling off quite aggressively, P block. It could be just an indication that we're going to get a really strong capitulation over the next couple of candles. Uh, so usually the P block comes in on the ninth candle. So then you can push really hard to the 13th. So maybe the next four weeks, we could see some really nasty capitulation. And the level that if that does happen, if we do get really nasty capitulation, the level I'm expecting that to come down to is around this 14,000 level. So that's our monthly support. So you know, this is a monthly you know, level P block through here. Previous monthly support was up here that we we're hoping we would get a bounce off and a rally up, you know, maybe to 58 or something. And then, you know, we're putting a big head and shoulders and roll over from there or something. But obviously world markets are way too bearish at the moment for that. So we're sort of just having, you know, that that capitulation event right now. And if it does get really bad and, you know, the Fed can't get inflation under control and maybe next month uh, CPI data comes out and, you know, it's above 8.6, it's like 9 or 9.2 or something like that. Uh, risk assets, you know, everything in the stock market is going to completely new because that means the Fed has to go even harder on tightening, even more aggressive on raising rates. And we definitely will see a 7.5 basis points increase. Uh, until you know we start to see that inflation start to ease and if that sort of action starts to happen i definitely can see us come down to 14k and then the next level of support after that is 10,800 so i mean at this point i i sort of would like to see some sort of massive capitulation uh just so I can buy a lot lower. But um, even if we do get a really big capitulation out of crypto, it doesn't mean that it's going to reverse straight after that because, you know, we'll probably go sideways for a long time. If it does get really nasty and have a huge pullback, that would be, you know, from the previous all-time high. From the previous all-time high uh, would be an 80 or 83, 85% pullback, right? Which is about the same level as what we had um, from previous all-time high in 2017 was 84% pullback, right? So definitely uh, not out of the realm of possibility, that is for sure. And if that does happen, we probably will get some sort of accumulation range like what we've got back here, right? So for sure, we could end up you know, with nasty capitulation, something like this, right? And then, you know, that's when you're all the or the wick off training that we do looking at wick off ranges, we'd be looking for accumulation range and then a rally out of there. So something like that could definitely happen. Um, but yeah, obviously that's a long way off from right now. So we don't need to worry too much about it. And we just need to concentrate on the current price action, but those are the sort of levels that I'm, uh, <coughs> I'm looking is potential. If you know, we do end up with total market wide uh, collapse, you know, now we're, we're already hitting down into 26, 26 levels so things could get pretty nasty here uh as i believe that there was a lot of people who bought in and tried to accumulate through here <coughs> and there's a huge potential for them to start getting their stop losses hit and liquidations hit especially once we go below uh these wicks here i think if we go to the um the binance chart give me one second guys yeah the us DT chart, we're right down at the moment to uh, this week down here. Usually on, on, on price action like this, I'd be looking, especially on the lower timeframes, 
right? I'd be looking for something like this, like a wick below here and then a reclaim. Something like that would be a really nice entry. But just because of what's happening, you know, with the stock market in general, like look at the NASDAQ, that's absolutely nasty right now. It looks like it wants to go a lot lower. Um, and everything that's happening at the moment with, you know, the CPI data and how the Fed's going to have to react to that. And also leading into FOMC on Wednesday, I think it's just going to be a very bearish environment for the first half of the week. Um, and then maybe we get a reversal after FOMC if it's not too bad. Uh, but let's see, because the real uh, elephant in the room right now is inflation. I believe that the Fed are going to really come out quite aggressively on Wednesday uh, and talk really hawkishly and so bearishly. Um, and that's going to mean there's going to get a lot more fear put into the market because the only, the only really tool that they have right now is to crash the stock market to try and stop inflation from going really out of control. And the fact that it hasn't peaked yet is a bad sign. But, you know, for all TA gurus out there, hopefully we can put in a double top here at 8.6 and then we get our... Um, a peak of inflation and it starts to come back back down after the US summer. So I was sort of thinking that possibly we could lead to a um whoops that we could lead to the possibility of a, a bottom sometime around uh September. But I think now because we haven't put in our peak in inflation yet, that might need to be pushed out maybe further to October, November. Um, but it all really comes down to seeing a really clear top being put into inflation. And then I think from that point forward, that's when we can really start con to consider a possible reversal in the market. Because remember, the stock market is always going to price everything in advance. So the stock market will, and in crypto for sure, I think we'll put it at bottom and reverse before the Federal Reserve turns back from QT to QE. It will reverse once they start talking about things like inflation you know, has topped out and inflation starting to come down. And when they start to talk about a shift of focus on growth, they start to talk about um, you know, moving back to QE, that's when I think the market will bottom. And it's really going to skyrocket once they do start printing again, they do start QE. But uh, I think the market will react to that many, many months before. So if you're waiting for the Fed to finally make the pivot, you're going to be behind the eight. You know, you're going to be behind the eight ball. You need to be thinking about and forecasting in advance and watching, you know, things like the CPI data coming out, watching things like FOMC, and watching, you know, the the language that Jerome Powell's using. And, you know, start to forecast it off, off things like that because the market will reverse earlier. Um, but you can always wait, I guess, and catch the main mo momentum and the ma and main part of the move, but you won't really be getting the, the Pico bottom, that's for sure. So, yeah, key sort of levels I'm looking at at the moment. We've marked some of those out, but I want to look at uh, a couple of moving averages here that are quite important to have a look at. So here I've got the MA200 and the MA150. So the 150 is the white line, 200 is the red. Uh, and typically markets like to come back to these levels. So uh, the moving average 200 weekly, right, is actually quite a key level at uh, 3,500 at the moment. We could see the market react quite strongly after tagging that level. We can see in 2018, we put in a really nice weekly pin bar reversal off that. So if you start to get some sort of market price action like that, uh, in 2016, we came down to it as well. Um, we'll have to go have a look at the uh, other market for more detail for the S on the SPX, right? In 2008, it did blow straight through it though. So, and also, also in 2001, it went much, much lower. So we have to see how price reacts to uh, this level, but it could be an indication at least for a bounce possibly. And if we start opening and closing below the 200 weekly moving average, that's a really bad sign that markets could go a lot, a lot lower. And this could be a much more extended downtrend uh, before we end up getting a reversal. Now let's go and have a look at the NASDAQ as well, right? So the NASDAQ loves to bounce off the 150, right? And if it doesn't bounce off 150, it usually bounces off 200. It doesn't look like we're going to bounce off the 150. So there's a very good chance I think this comes back to the 200, uh, which is also at uh, a nice little level through here as well. So NASDAQ could be coming back here, right? And if we look at that historically, you can see the dot-com bubble, it came 
back below it pretty nicely. But apart from that, it's bounced off it pretty much every single time. So let's see what happens. The Fed could also see this and start to make moves to protect the market from spending too much time below the 200 weekly average as well, right? So let's go quickly have, uh, I'll just get it up on here. We'll get the index level. So yeah, the weekly, we'll look at it on log charts. It's a bit easier. All right, so the weekly 200, which Bitcoin has bounced off perfectly pretty much every single time. So we can see multiple touches throughout here. And that actually put in uh, the range low for uh, the wick off accumulation that we went through. You can see this is the high through here, right? So it was a wick off reaccumulation. The spring got put in and then we rallied out of that, flipped it here and then went into the bull market from there, right? Uh, put in the, the, the Pico bottom at 3.2K uh, in uh, December 18, right? And then the COVID crash went below and closed back above it, right? Uh, and so the current level for that is 22K. So maybe we get some really nasty market-wide action and we wick below this, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect the price of Bitcoin to spend much time below this level. I'd be really surprised, uh, you know, that would go against, you know, price action history of the last 10, 13 years of, of Bitcoin trading. So but, you know, just because something's never happened before doesn't mean it won't happen, right? And 22K at the moment, it actually looks pretty high, uh, especially when you're looking at the chart on log, right? So we can easily come back to either of these two levels, but there's a possibility that maybe we come back, tag the all-time high, right? And then we spend, you know, maybe the, the, the accumulation range is through here, right? We do something like that. You know, it matches. We get an accumulation range similar to this, this one back in uh, 2015, right? That would make a lot of sense to me if something like that played out. And you know, we sort of just wick down to previous all-time high. We don't spend much time trading below it, and uh, price sort of stays above this uh, 200 moving average, similar to how it did back here in the COVID crash. But let's see how it plays out. It all depends on um, what the Bitcoin whales want to do, what levels they want to accumulate at. But those are the major areas that I'm watching. The 200 moving average, previous all-time high at 19 to 20K, and uh, this key level through here as well, which sort of is like 11K, right? And then uh, also the, the monthly level as well, monthly support level, which is 14. So I think you know if you have those areas marked on your chart, you should be able to buy in at some... Um, some decent levels, but you know, as always, we need to wait for the accumulation range. Bottoms take a long time to form. They don't usually happen super fast. You know, obviously, you know, the ultimate bottom happens quite quickly. But if we look at all of our bottoms, right? They took, you know, this one took three months, right? 130 days. This one was extremely quickly, but I don't think we're going to have a similar situation. You know, this nuked off really hard. And then we had the Federal Reserve come out and say that they're going to pump money into the market and they're going to pump $14 trillion into the, you know, the economy, right? I think it's going to be more like the 2015 range and you're going to have quite some time. Like this one went on for 300 days, almost a year, right? Might not happen for that long for this one because, you know, I, I do think that after the Fed finishes tightening the stock market and the economy is going to be in such a bad place that they're actually going to have to swing back to QE and start pumping money into the market. You're going to have to start pumping money into the economy, maybe even doing handouts for people again uh, to get things going again because they seem to be so far behind the eight ball. You know, they printed too much, obviously. But they, uh, they didn't have the foresight to obviously see the war and ex really extended lockdowns in China. So, you know, we really don't we have a timeline on either of those two things, which is really important to get supply back online, which is going to help bring down those inflation numbers. But that's pretty much it for the outlook, guys. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Uh, the other thing I wanted to look at as well, it was Solana. And, uh, you know, a lot of these DeFi coins um, and altcoins in general are down massive numbers, like 88% already down from the all-time high. We could see uh, some sort of an accumulation range, but I think Solana is probably going to come back to $17 um, 
And if it doesn't, I mean, if Bitcoin comes down to like 10 to that 14K area, which you know, would be pretty brutal, you can't rule out Solana coming all the way back down to like $5. But I'm not 100% sure if it's going to go that low. I think the sort of levels you know, it can come back down to be pretty fair to start an accumulation range. Would it be in this range through here around this uh, $17 mark, right? So, you know, we can go quickly have a look at some of the DeFi coins, um, right? So if we look at the DeFi perp range, right, this is coming back. It's pretty much it's opening price. Um, you know, and like these, a lot of these coins, it just looks like absolute disaster. The shit coin perp as well. Definitely can go a lot lower. Um, let's have a quick look. Yeah, things like ADA, right? Come back to its previous, like this was a really nice accumulation range. I think price could easily come back down to these levels or, you know, Put in, put in its next accumulation range, maybe a little bit higher above this level here. But um, we've never really seen crypto, how it behaves in this type of world economic market at the moment. So everything is sort of off the book. But I think for altcoins, people worrying about, you know, missing the bottom on altcoins and stuff like that, you're going to have a long time. Like look at the last bear market cycle. You had to get into ADA before it broke out. Uh, you had two years, 660 days, and it came back and retested. You had 800 days from when it entered into its accumulation range before you could buy um, the retest of the wick off range, right? So don't stress too much. It's going to be really obvious when these get put in. Um, Axie almost completely all the way back to its, you know, its listing price. Dot as well, two full market cycles back to its listing price almost as well. Sushi, right? Full market cycle back to its listing price. So, you know, a lot of coins looked similar to this in the previous, in the 2017 um, cycle, right? And then, you know, a lot of them went sideways like this and they put in two year accumulation ranges, right? And then they broke out, retested here and took off. So that's the sort of stuff that we want to be looking for on our altcoin runs. And this was after Bitcoin had already been on a really strong run out of the bottom. The Bitcoin bottom is a lot quicker and it usually runs first. It runs quite hard and then the altcoins catch up. But you have a lot of time uh, to catch this in, in my opinion. So don't stress too much um, about catching these altcoin bottoms. It's going to be really long. Uh, probably one minimum six months, depending on how quickly the QE comes out. But I think six months to two years for some of these altcoins before they break out of their accumulation range, uh, and then we can we can discuss that um, that price action when it comes in. Okay, so that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I'll catch you all in the next episode.